I have a lot of resources that I use for coming up with my STEM activities. One of my favorites is the Dad Lab by Sergey Urban. In here is an experiment called the Fossil Dinosaur Egg, where you freeze a water balloon and then you break it open by smashing it on the ground or hitting it with a hammer. I wanted to take that one step further and explore the science behind freezing and melting. And we're going to do that today on Becoming Their Science Hero. Sergei's original activity was predicated on placing a toy inside a balloon, filling it with water, freezing it, and then hatching the egg with a hammer, or as my kids really like doing, throwing it at the ground. This is a ton of fun, and they love recovering the toys that they have hidden inside. Even though I'm going to take this activity in a slightly different direction, I highly recommend keeping a couple balloons to the side so your little scientists can smash them. When selecting the items to put inside your balloon, there are a few key considerations. Your object cannot be too big to fit through the balloon opening, such as this fire truck. You also need to consider if there are pointy edges that may pierce a balloon, such as with this helicopter. Finally, you should not use any object that has electronic components like this wall board. Putting the objects inside of the balloon can seem intimidating, but can be accomplished by yourself or with a little scientist's help. First, slide two fingers from each hand inside of the balloon and slowly crawl them past the neck. Once they are into the body of the balloon, stretch it open as wide as you can. Now either place the object inside of the balloon yourself or get a little scientist to put it in for you. Slowly cover the entire object, making sure to be mindful of any rough edges. Next, we will fill our balloons with water. If your faucet has an external aerator like this one, you should easily be able to put the mouth of the balloon around it to fill it with water. Controlling the water flow is a great spot to get help from your little scientists. However, if you do not have a faucet that will allow you to fill up the balloon, you may need to go to your outside spigot. You can fill your balloons to anywhere between four and six inches, but try to be consistent across all of your balloons for the experiment. When you remove your balloon from the faucet, pinch the neck and point it straight into the air. Slightly release your fingers from the neck allowing the air bubble to escape, and then tie off the balloon. Finally, we place our balloons in the freezer overnight. We want a nice deep freeze, so the longer we leave them in the freezer, the better. Now that we have turned our liquid water into ice, we are going to compare different methods for melting our ice balloon. We first remove the ice from the balloon so that we could observe it as it melts. We explored three different conditions for melting, but there are plenty more that you could explore. We filled two of our bowls with water and a third one was left empty. We kept one of our water bowls and the empty bowl indoors and kept the other water bowl outdoors. This was a snowy day at our house with a temperature in the high 20s, so you could imagine a much different result in the spring or summer. You could also mimic the winter weather by placing a water bowl in your refrigerator. Ask your little scientists to hypothesize which one will melt the fastest and why. Then observe what is happening periodically. The most obvious effect will be with temperature. When all else is equal, warm temperatures mean faster melting. However, perhaps the more interesting observation will be that ice melts much faster in water than it does in just the air. In fact, our ice and water outside melted considerably faster than the ice that was in an empty bowl inside. This was in spite of the fact that our water bowl outside became slushy as it started to freeze due to the cold air temperatures over the course of the four hours. Now, let's explore why ice melts so much faster in water than air of the same temperature. In order for ice to melt, it needs heat or in other words, energy to be transferred to it. 
one source of this energy could be the sun's radiation. But to compare how heat is transferred in liquid water versus air, it helps if we think about this on a molecular level. First, heat is the transfer of energy from an object that is warmer to one that is colder. The energy is transferred every time a molecule of air collides with the ice. The larger the temperature difference, the larger the transfer of energy, and ultimately the faster the ice will melt. However, this alone does not explain why water heats up ice faster when the air and the water are the same temperature. To explain this, we have to think of the number of collisions that will occur to allow this transfer of energy. Water is a liquid and has a density of about one gram per milliliter. On the other hand, air is a gas and it only has a density of 0.00128 grams per milliliter. To put this into perspective, if there were only two molecules in a given space for air, it would take over 1250 molecules of water to occupy the same space. Now if we think of this in terms of energy, more molecules means more possible collisions, and therefore more heat being transferred. Now if we add ice to the water or the air, it should become a bit more obvious about why we can melt the ice much faster in room temperature water than room temperature air. All of those extra collisions from the water melted our ice so much faster than the air alone was able to. Think about the science here next time you want to thaw meat before you cook dinner. So I've really enjoyed getting to do Sergei's fossil dinosaur egg experiment with my little scientists for a very long time. I wanted to put a new twist on that for you here in the area of thermodynamics, which is in the branch of science known as physical chemistry. Now we do this here in the winter time, but you can imagine doing this in the summertime as well and getting to explore what warmer temperatures do to the ice. So remember to encourage your little scientists to explore and question everything. <laughs>